from Roger McPherson on a chilly, windy night here in Bergen. Liverpool set out once again in pursuit of the trophy they have never laid hands on, the European Cup or his Cup. Their opponents tonight, Brand stated the case for being taken very seriously indeed by travelling to Eindhoven in the last round and ousting the Dutch league leaders PSV by drawing with them and going through 4-3 on aggregate. And with the increasing reputation of Norwegian football, indeed in the whole of Scandinavia, no longer can their trips here be taken for granted. And given how Rosenberg of Trondheim played last night against UV, and how any Liverpudlian bridles at the very name of Bronby, who shocked them in the UEFA Cup last season at Anfield, Liverpool, have enough intimations of a very tough night in prospect. And Brand, whose season doesn't start again until April, have been off to the sun, indeed, as far as South Africa, to prepare for this game. They played two games out there, three in Germany, and the indication of a high degree of professionalism here in a country that used to be a bit of a joke in football. And talking about jokes, the announcer has just told us, uh, in fact, he addressed the Liverpool support away in the background there. He said, thank you very much indeed for sending over the 444 million litres of rain we've had in the past three days, uh, just to make you feel at home. Well, it had an effect on this pitch. It looks all right just now, but uh, I think it'll cut up, and a man who knows that is a man who walked on the pitch uh, just a few minutes ago and who this afternoon addressed the assembled throng of the Bergen branch of the Liverpool Supporters Club. I'm talking about one of the Liverpool legends, of course, former England and Liverpool goalkeeper Ray Clemens. Well, Ray, this afternoon was at uh, Jam Butties and Gravel Action. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite like that. But we had, uh, there was the old ham and cheese sandwich and they did try to give us a meat pie, I have to say, but it was a, it was a very, very in enjoyable afternoon. And uh, so, you know, the whole of Bergen is keyed up for this game. This is the biggest game they've had in their history. And uh, they really fancy their chances against this Liverpool side, but uh, you know, Liverpool are an experienced side. They've got a lot of players in there that have got experience at all levels. And I think this, the whole game will hinge on the first 30 minutes of it, really. Well, now, before we get to the team selections, this pitch. Now, as we see here, the viewers around Europe watching this just now will say, well, it doesn't look all that bad. But yesterday, the Russian referee considered calling the game off, and you've been on the pitch and think it's going to cut up. I think so, yeah. It's a, it's a very sandy-based pitch, and uh, uh, as you'll see when the camera pans out, you'll see there are one or two ball patches in it, which are very, very soft. And I think as the game goes on, certainly it will cut up in certain areas. Right, now let's get into this Liverpool team selection. There have been problems. He has had injuries. He's to uh, arrange a different kind of defence, and he's brought in John Harkness. Yes, I mean, it's a... Uh, there we are, that's the team now. Slightly a surprise bringing Steve Hart. This is his first game back at senior level since breaking his leg. He's had a few reserve games, so he should be OK fitness-wise. But what it does mean is they'll finish up playing with three at the back, all left-footers. Matteo, I'm presuming, will go to the right-hand side of the back three. Runnick will play in the middle of it, and Harkness will play on that left-hand side. Now, the unfortunate thing about Steve Harkness is he's had two serious leg breaks. In fact, the, the very first senior game after his leg break, he broke it again. Now, can players really recover at the top level when something like that happens to them? Yes, I mean, it's a mental thing, and I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that uh, you know, the, the, the Liverpool staff have looked at that situation and said, yes, he's ready for it. You know, there we see the makeup of the team. Berger, I feel, will drop off the front. I think that Fowler will play up the front on his own, and Berger and McManaman will play off Fowler, uh, A, to make them more solid defensively, but B, both of them are capable of breaking very quickly from midfield. Now, there's Bran, and I want uh, all the Bepudlians watching this programme tonight, and I'm sure there's a huge throng, to keep your eyes on number nine. Andre Torre Flo, who might end up on Merseyside next season. The rumours are he's been looked at, he's impressed the Liverpool staff. I'm, I'm quite sure they don't want him to play too well tonight, but he's a powerful, powerful front runner, and I suspect he's going to be left on his own tonight. Well, yes, he's a tall, gangly lad. He, he's, he doesn't look the smoothest of movers at times, doesn't look the quickest at times, but he always finishes up getting on the end of balls. And uh, certainly, again, with that si situation there, I think that Hassan will, will drop back slightly and Flo will be the lone striker being joined by midfield players. Now, very, sig very, very significantly, Mons Ivor Mielder, who's one of the top goal scorers with 19 goals, cannot play in this game tonight, and they've had to rearrange the team as well. There we are, that's a little beer patch on the pitch there. Now, what they've done 
is uh, Emil Dick, uh, who was very doubtful. He's been sick all week. I don't think it's a, an injury, he's just been feeling under the weather. Off we go into the start of this game. And what they've done is bring in an Icelandic player. He'll be playing, uh, I think, just off Flo, just in behind Flo. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how he copes with the high professionalism of Liverpool. We saw them, of course, in Eurosport playing away from home against Sion. And they went to, about their job very clinically and efficiently. Not so good at the weekend, perhaps, but playing on a pitch that didn't suit them, Ray, it was cutting up, and even McManaman could make uh, not all that many of his long runs. No, it was very difficult for him to run with the ball as such because it was bobbling all over the place. But it's interesting as we talk about how Brown will set themselves up. Now there's a tag, now Flo going through with a wonderful chance to score, and it's just taken away. And that shows you the strength of this man breaking away and just shrugging off the defenders as he came at him. Well, that would be very worrying for the Liverpool bench that all of a sudden Neil Ruddick was left exposed one against one, and Flo got the other side of him and really should have scored because he rounded David James and, and just took a little bit too much time to actually stick it into the net and Ruddock bailed them out. But that was a little worrying. I mean, one of the problems when when sides play with one up the field, as Bran are doing, is that which one of the back three picks him up? And sometimes nobody picks him up and all of a sudden he gets that space like he did just a couple of seconds ago. Well, he missed the four games of the Norwegian season and yet ended up the top scorer in the league with uh, 19 goals. So very good average of striking. I think what might have put him off there, Ray, was a surface. It, he didn't seem to be uh, too confident as he made his way towards the goalkeeper. Smackatier on the far side. So I'm a little surprised with the Norwegians' tactics, really, because I would have thought that their best chance of getting something out of this game was to really go at Liverpool in the first 25, 30 minutes and that they're standing off, playing with one up the front, and allowing Liverpool to have lots of the ball. And the more possession you give Liverpool, the more confident they'll get, and the more they'll get into their pattern of play. McManaman, who's going to be very closely marked, coming right down his throat there was Eric Scallion, a local boy who is, I think, his strongest asset, as I hear from the locals here, is simply a marker, a hard worker. Now, not, not neatly picked up. Redknapp trying to put that away. And a tackle eventually there. Eftervag came across. Eftervag, the captain of this side. Great reputation. Uh, played around the side there to Paldan. And a rather weak ball. Well, I think that might concentrate the mind of that uh, Liverpool defence after that one. Well, certainly it was a scare for them and one which could have been very, very costly. And it was only because Flo just hesitated after he'd taken it round. David James couldn't quite get his balance, but they're not actually 1-0 down. Redknapp, touch that, taken up by McAteer. That uh, driving running of his to the right, of course, is essential tonight. Well, some local booze for Bjornavi as he, as he picked that up. John Barnes just slightly late. They're closing down in Liverpool in midfield very quickly. McManaman. Just a little bit bogged down in midfield at the moment. John Barnes. Took that up well, and this is where they could be dangerous, except there's only flow up. And the player there that picked that up, Hassan, had one look at Flo and then changed his mind about putting the ball forward. He saw that Flo was outnumbered, which uh, gets back to what you were saying, Ray. Yes, I mean, there was, there was no support there whatsoever, and uh, that's a problem that the Norwegians will have with a system that they've got. And uh, I personally feel that they're, they're playing into the hands of Liverpool at this present moment, and I'm sure that Roy Evans is quite happy with this, the way that the Norwegians have set themselves up in this game. Wind seems to be blowing rather diagonally right to left across the pitch. Very difficult to, to work out. I think maybe in Liverpool's favour at the moment. Harkness tried to get Bjornaby away there and just touched away.
Well, loud growl of disappointment there as that was uh, touched away. Matteo looking very solid at the moment. Berger. Redknapp taking his eye off it. McManaman. He'll want to go at the defense. Easily picked up there by Lugvison. Now uh, here's a rush forward. But James out of his goal very quickly. Oh. Uh, just plucked out of the air there by Ruddock as James tried to get back. Now Barnes. Always remember that wonderful goal Barnes scored against Brazil. Since then, of course, these days dropped back into midfield. And now the Povera passes. That's a better ball down the right hand side. McAteer picking up as usual. Matteo was giving support onto Barnes. Liverpool on the passing game again. That's a useful ball. Headed uh, just away by Ludwigsen. Pierre Avi Ludwigsen, 30 years of age, another local boy here, played with the other team in Bergen. Ludwigsen, the man who cleared that ball there, was rated very highly by the national coach. It looked as if he might be the center of the Norwegian defense, and then he suffered a very serious groin injury. And that put an end to his international career. He's now a very solid club player. Robbie Fowler scored his 100th goal for the club this season against Middlesbrough. Scoring rate is quite phenomenal. John Barnes. Slipped down there by Redknapp. Playing confidently at the moment. And uh, the Norwegians allowing them to knock the ball about like this. I've already seen a game like this this week when Bronby took on Tenerife and allowed uh, Tenerife to do all the play and then broke away. So it's got to be a thought in the back of Liverpool's mind. Yes, it has, but I'm sure that uh, they'll be happy to keep possession of the ball and play at their own pace, which is exactly what uh, Bram Bergen are allowing them to do at the moment, just pass it around, just change into another gear when they get into the attacking third of the field. But in the, in the middle field, th third of the field, they've just got total control of the, of the game. That was Palden taking that away. McAteer. Redknapp. Going across the field just done. He's got to make the run and just a, another touch inside there by Berger. McAteer in that normal position. We can send that ball instinctively out to the right-hand side, and he's got to be somewhere around there. And I think the goalkeeper, Vida Bajus, realized that was going past all the way. Well, no Collymore tonight, of course. Straight uh, swap there with Berger in position. Now, John Barnes. I thought Fowler for a moment was going to dummy that. Certainly had Redknapp just behind him. Well, they certainly like to pass the ball around like this Liverpool, but they're not making all that much progress at the moment and a very patient-looking red shirt each side just letting them play around with it well let's remember it's a european tie it's not, they're not playing for points in the league it's a case of getting through over two legs and although you know liverpool would love to win this game a nil nil result isn't the worst thing in the world for them so they'll be very happy with the way that things have oh follow brilliantly done now can he put it away oh what a superb goal Rattling it in, would you believe, in 11 minutes? And has he scored a better one than this, Ray? Well, this is a fantastic first touch. Bjorn will be, watch this, outside of the heel, over the top of the defender. No covering defender. And then a volleyed finish in the near post. Keeper may be a little bit disappointed, but just this touch here is absolutely world class. 
and then as it drops down he looks where the keeper is knows he has to volley he hasn't got any more time rifles it in well that's exactly what Liverpool's needed well I think there's an assumption you've got to be born and brought up in Copacabana Beach to take balls and score goals like that but there you are uh, he comes from a colder climb but he has the elasticity in his play that uh, almost as if the sun beams down in his back all the time that was a glorious goal well we saw some good goals in the Champions League last night but none better than that I'm sure so 1-0 great start scoring a goal away from home at any time gives you that uh, added dimension uh, no chance there it was uh, Ludvigsen that came forward uh, here's the break McAteer almost went away with it now we've got at least four red shirts coming forward here and that's the way wild no chance for Hassan they came in there with uh, the Liverpool defense having backtracked very quickly indeed well really he tried to place it into that top corner there didn't he but didn't get the accuracy and uh, put it way wide but uh, you can see what his idea was but to be fair to Neil Rullick he closed him down very very quickly yeah I think his presence put him off more than anything else well that'll certainly warm up the Liverpool support here tonight there's about a uh, thousand of them just to our right hand side and it really is very cold as McAteer going on that run again and I think that might be a goal kick yes took that very well McAteer straightforward player but of course it's effective to have somebody wide who can play in very quick and unexpected balls which he does brilliantly that's the goalkeeper who's playing here under surprising circumstances he really shouldn't be here Christiansen the Icelandic goalkeeper and uh, Peterson the outfield player were quite astonishingly loaned to different clubs Christiansen went to uh, Birmingham and Peterson to Circle of Bruges which was against UEFA regulations and banned from playing in this game as a result I don't know who, in this day and age with lawyers and agents how on earth was that mistake made because it's certainly we can decide well that's right certainly I think there's been repercussions inside the brand club since that decision was made as well so I think uh, somebody has paid for that uh, terrible mistake they have four players forward number five getting uphill and coming into attack no chance of flow thought flow played remarkably well recently when Norway went to Switzerland to play. They won by one goal to nil. He didn't score the goal, but he really bothered that uh, Swiss defense with his height and his physique. Very difficult to dispossess. Barnes. I must say, Ray, maybe because of the wind, the pitch seems to have dried out very quickly. Yes, there's one or two little areas where it's cutting up, but in general, no, the ball's been allowed to, to be passed around very well. Well played just forward Haslund coming into the attack again. No free kick, the referee says. Big Bannerman. Ruddock. Ruddock brought to Liverpool, of course, by Graham Sunnis. He liked that kind of central defender. I remember he signed Graham Roberts for Glasgow Rangers when he went there somebody who's no blushing violet let's put it that way no no uh, Neil Ruddick he wears his heart on his sleeve when he gets out on that field he takes no prisoners whatsoever and consequently occasionally gets in trouble for it but uh, you know what you're going to get from Neil Ruddick when he's out there with that Liverpool shirt on he's 100% committed and he'll do everything in his power to make sure that nobody gets past him they have quality I mean the, the Norwegians were saying to me before the game that although they they were perhaps more confident than some of the uh, others have been in the past that Liverpool had class and Rudder giving them substance at the back is 
supplemented by the class of players like uh, Jimmy Redknapp, and it's great to see him back in football after injuries that kept him out of the game so much. I mean, the thing is with Neil Ruddock, not only is he a good defender, he's got a tremendous left foot. Let's not forget that it was his pass, long pass to Bjornaby, which was headed on for Fowler to score the goal. And he's capable of doing that with that left foot, knocking balls left to right or right to left. And he, he never seems unruffled until somebody ruffles him, and <laughs> that, then he makes it obvious. So there's the goalkeeper, Vida Bajos. He's already played in the European Cup, by the way. He's not really considered very strong. I think the locals feel he might be the, the weak link, but uh, he had absolutely no chance for that shot by Fowler. Here, yes, he played for the other club, Tillingen against uh, Atletico Madrid. Now picked up by Helland. Nicely shepherded there, away to the corner by McAteer. Doing his job perfectly. Well, he looks good in the air, tall, six feet five. And it must be good uh, for a defense to know a goalkeeper like that is at the back. Well, that's just you want, what you want away from home is somebody who comes and commands that box when he needs to come. And I think uh, David James has, has matured in this last couple of years and certainly he he's gets better all the time. And, uh, you know, in those situations where the ball's hanging up there, he should come and ca collect them. And certainly on that occasion, although Brand had one or two tall attackers up there, he has the confidence to come and catch those balls. John Barnes. Matteo. Bacatier. You know, they not, not only have class, of course, they have experience as well. Uh, and I really do think if they just watch what they're doing, they have taken a huge stride towards getting into the semi-finals by that spectacular goal by Fowler. Harkness. Redknapp. Now Barnes with that look of determination on his face. Flicked away by Moon. And that'll be covered again. What has surprised me is that since we've been out here, Archie, you know, the brand supporters have been saying how confident that they are of getting a result and beating Liverpool. And yet they've come out on the field, and I think they're obviously in fear and have got so much respect for Liverpool that they're just not closing them down and therefore giving them the opportunity to pass this ball around. You would have thought if they had that much confidence, they would have really had a go at Liverpool's defence. And so far, they've, they've um, not been allowed to do that. Well, I think the important thing is Liverpool scoring that early goal. I think if, you know, it had been nothing each well into the, the second half, it uh, would have become a rather nervous situation for Liverpool. Now, I think they've relaxed considerably. Trouble is, the worst aspect of the Scandinavian sides, Ray, is they can look robotic, you know, as if the, they play too rigidly to a game plan. Sometimes it comes off for them, of course. McManaman, Barnes, Redknapp fighting hard for that. Might take him yet another month or so to get really into full stride, Redknapp. Well, I think uh, the more games he plays, the more improvement he shows, to be fair. Um, I mean, the other interesting thing is what Liverpool have done is, is like in the old days, is you come away from home and, as we know beforehand, Archie, the, the atmosphere was, was fantastic before the game and one that, uh, you know, might have intimidated Liverpool. But certainly Liverpool had so much possession of the ball, the brand supporters have gone absolutely quiet and the only noise we can hear in the stadium is the Liverpool supporters to a right-hand side cheering their team on. We're really enjoying this performance at the moment. Uh, and by that, I don't mean it's a spectacular game in any way, but Liverpool really have taken a strong grip. They really have clamped down on this match. And it helps to have a, a striker like Fowler. Took him a long while to score his first European goal. He scored it when Eurosport covered that game in Sion. Well, I've seen the last couple of games that, that Fowler's played in, and, uh, you know, certainly at Blackburn at home, he missed four or five chances he normally would, would put in. Then at Villa, he missed a golden opportunity, and one or two people were saying, well, has he lost that scoring touch? People like Fowler don't lose their scoring touch. They'll always score goals. Yes, they'll miss them. But well, well, he scored yeah. 22 this season. I mean, that must be good in anybody's 
language and that's strongly in the bank shouting out there that wasn't the coach by the way I think that was a physio the coaches kill Kenford man has only been two years with the club Barnes by the way Bran are here only by courtesy of Rosenberg winning both the league championship and the cup that were beaten in the final by Rosenberg and Kavami is not here of course because he played for Rosenberg in the Champions League or else he would be playing for Liverpool tonight well I don't know who's booing but if it's a criticism of the way that Liverpool are simply holding on to the ball just now then really the owner should be on the Norwegians to take the initiative well, in fact, I don't think um, they're, they're actually booing Liverpool. I think they're actually having to go at their own team because they're standing off and just let Liverpool do what they want, really. Oh, he's looking in towards Flo. There's a little touch on. That's a decent ball. That ball played in towards Helland off the head of Flo. Well, that was a super tackle by, by Harkness there. Steve Harkness on, the, on his right-hand side, not his best side, but had to time his tackle to perfection. Otherwise, there was the possibility of a penalty. Just get the feeling that more goals in Liverpool all the same. I mean, Fowler's hardly touched the ball in the game, and he's touched it effectively. He came way back into the fence, as you saw. Well, you feel Liverpool are playing within themselves at the moment. They're not being stretched. Um, obviously, the problem with that is, is does complacency sit in, and then they might make an error at the back and encourage the Norwegians to actually come and have a go at them. But uh, at the moment, they're comfortable. Well, really, nobody pressurising John Barnes as he picked it up there. You would have thought there would have been a challenge. Nobody coming forward. It's as if uh, you feel Liverpool have something up their sleeve, you know, that suddenly they're going to unleash something. Well, they certainly did with Fowler. And that's a better-looking ball. Berger begins to come forward. John Barnes... Bjornaby, that's a bit of ball inside, but uh, chopped away there by Eftervag again. It is said that Anderlecht are looking at him tonight, the central defender. And indeed, he was a teenage trialist with Liverpool. That was something like 10 years ago. Well, he is a solid player. There's Redknapp I was talking about. Always been a, a talented player. Lots of good football in him. You know, when you think of it, Ray, it cost 500,000 pounds <laughs> from Bournemouth. No, I mean, obviously, you, you think of what his value would be on the open market now, it would be incredible. But, uh, you know, he's had to fight to get back in the side because Michael Thomas and, and John Barnes have held those two central midfield players uh, positions for some while this season. and. and Jamie Redknapp's had to be patient, but I'm sure now that he's got back in the side, he'll make sure that, bar an injury, he takes some shifting. Well, he's been unlucky, too. I think he had one of the, the shortest spells with an English international side when he came on for six minutes. He was substituted after six minutes. Yes, a that was a serious hamstring injury. I think he had an ankle as well, to be honest, and uh, really that ankle injury is something that's, uh, that has uh, hampered him this season. Now, I have to confess that this game, as European spectaculars go, is like watching grass growing, but Liverpool have functioned as only they know how. They're in the lead. They don't mind the fact that uh, this side are simply camped in their own half without trying to do anything, certainly not creatively. Now, here's Flo. Always the opportunity that he could bustle his way through. Well, they were ruffled there. Mistake there by Ludwigsen. There's a Liverpool coach right out there screaming at his men. Red Knapp. Red Knapp, by the way, the youngest player ever to play for Liverpool in Europe. That's a free kick. 
Conceded there by Ludvigsen. Well, there's no doubt in his, his right underneath McManaman then. And he encourages people at McManaman to tackle him like that because he's got such tight control of the ball. What a beautifully judged pass that was by Robbie Farlow. Superbly weighted. Mackett here waiting for it. There's Barnes. Red nap. Inching the way forward again. I think that might be a free kick. And there's a, a large divot out of the turf just to prove that Ray Clements actually was on the pitch and it actually is soft. <laughs> That's the piece I was walking on there. Still 1-0 to Liverpool. Oh, that's a mistake, and comes Berger, he could kill it now. Well, disappointing there, Berger saw his opportunity to flash in. Yeah, I mean, he's very strong, gets across Palden there, and he's disappointed there, he doesn't actually hit the ball across the keeper, and he had a real chance of scoring then. Taken just about 32 minutes, uh, 22 minutes gone, and sliced away. Fell down onto flow. Well tackled by Ruddock. Good support by McAteer. Just coming into that zone at the right time. There's Barnes. Now here's the run. I certainly would like to see there's perhaps no more exciting spectacle in British football than this man picking the ball up and running from deep. He didn't see much of it against Villa, but he was playing on a very poor pitch. Ball seemed to bobble away from him all the time when he picked it up. McManaman. That's a useful ball, and not surprisingly, makes a mistake again. Great ball swept in there by Bjornaby and Ray. <laughs> I think I'm right in saying and indeed stressing the fears of the locals about this man. Well, it was a good cross from Bjornaby to the far post, wasn't it? But Bahus there was like chasing the 27 bus, wasn't he? I mean, he was never ever going to get to the ball. And uh, Robbie Fowler again with that audacious little flick of the outside of his foot nearly caused major embarrassment to him. Well, at this stage, you have to say that uh, Brian Bergen are a feckless outfit. But that's uh, simply in itself a warning to Liverpool not to get complacent, as, as Ray said. Ruddock. He certainly has a physique to take on this strong, rugged front run out of uh, Brian. Free kick. We take it by Harkness. On to Redknapp. McAteer. Run inside there, looking inside for McManaman. And a valuable thing as they keep possession. Redknapp hasn't ventured all that deeply into the brand half might just get this a little bit lucky no free kick Bjornaby picks it up again and Berger makes a run on the left neatly cut off on the right hand side there by Pelden Barnes no just uh Lacking a little bit of sharpness there, maybe not surprising for short pines. Well, it is cutting up there. You could see uh, a closer shot there of uh, certain parts of the pitch. Red nap. 
They really are playing comfortably, Ray. Here, you, you wonder is there some sort of deceit going on with this team? Are they going to turn around in the second half and a kind of Jekyll and Hyde performance? Bjornaby, nice little dummy there, and uh, I think McManaman tried to play it back to Berger. I don't think McManaman realised how much space he had there. He actually looked as though he had time to maybe control that and have a finish himself, and in fact tried to set up Berger, and that didn't come off. But certainly the opportunity was there. Good ball in from his left-hand side again and it caused the Bergen defence problems. Free kick. Try to play that uh, to the outside and it'll be taken, I think, by Bjornaby. McManaman's there as well. Just recovering. Seemed to take a knock on the hip. Bjornaby with it. Headed away there by uh, Gleitson. And I think that's right out of the ground. They're running all the way down to the harbour. Satisfied at this stage, I'm quite sure. Very satisfied. Uh, Liverpool have done a European job. They've kept the ball, they've quietened the crowd, they've scored a, a goal, and they've had two or three other openings where they might have scored a second goal. And I'm sure that Roy Evans sat on the bench will be quite happy with the way things are going at the moment. Well, the Norwegian crowds in the past, the very recent past, have shown a great deal of fervour, but I don't know, tonight, I always get the feeling they've heard all the pubs are closed for the rest of the night. There's a kind of funereal silence away across on the far side. Free kick, be taken by Peterson. Redknapp. Barnes. Harkness playing with Barnes there, and then the forward movement. That's a bit of play, and a, a loose slack pass there by Fowler. I think McManaman wanted to go down that inside left channel there. Well, certainly it was a well-worked move with Liverpool. Just a final pass from Fowler. Just didn't have enough pace on to get Bjornaby in around the back of them. Bjornaby to take this. There goes that left ball and Fowler. He had his hand on the trigger that time. Flo all on his own. Put forward there by Peterson and then strong tackle there by Harkness playing his part very well here. Well, I'm sure that Harkness is quite happy with the game, the way the game is played. It's his first game for some while, and really he's not been pressurised so far. What he's had to do, he's dealt with very well. We've just seen a good tackle there on his left side. He put in a very good uh, tackle on his right-hand side inside the penalty area before, so he'll be happy also with the way things have started for him in this game. Well, I think the memories of Bronby are still alive and fresh in the minds of Liverpool supporters because talking to some of them today, really, they weren't all that uh, happy about how this game might go tonight. No, it's had the makings of a very tricky night here, but I uh, say their performance so far has, has turned it sometimes, the pace that Liverpool have played at, into more like a practice game. Went forward neatly by Helland. There's Flo. As I said, very difficult to dispossess. Almost gets his way through. He is the most inelegant of players, but very effective. And, you know, it's astonishing that they're not plying him with the ball up front. Because he does have the capability. Oh, I thought he was offside there by at least two yards. He does get his shot in. And I, quite frankly, I think the linesman was behind the play there, Ray. Well, certainly he looks in an offside position from, we, from where our position was, and thankfully Flo got underneath that and didn't get it on target, otherwise it could have been very embarrassing. Well, he comes from a very strong family, of course, the brother of Jocelyn of Sheffield and the cousin of uh, Albert Flo of Werder Bremen. So it runs in the family. He scored six goals in the three friendly matches I was talking about that they played in South Africa. And 19 goals last season, in the season uh, that ended prior to it starting up again, as it will in April. A little bit of confusion there. 
Ludvigsen gets it away. And that should be got by James. Gets back to his goal quickly. Well, Harkness just losing out in that, slipping in from the back there, just coming in very quickly was uh, Peterson again. Bustling figure of Fowler who's come back deep again to pick up the ball. So said he hasn't been in the game all that much, but a great striker doesn't really need to be. As long as he does his job when asked, and he has. Berger. Redknapp. McAteer. Once again, going from the short passing game to that very long pass. Amik Maneman, can he take his player on? He can't. That was Bone coming up, taking that ball away from him. There's the captain at the bag. Sending that clear. And a bit of a push, yes. Flo doesn't like that decision. I think it's quite right. Just watch his hands go onto the back there of Harkness. And certainly, in my mind, that was always a free kick. I'm pleased that the referee actually gave it. So, 1-0 to Liverpool. Score still. Barnes. An effective forward pass that time by Barnes. Looking for Bjornavi now. Oh! Almost got away with that, Big Manaman. Delightful little turn. The Icelandic player is simply playing a marking game. And I really do think they're missing the other strike. I mean, they have had to revise the whole side because he's not playing uh, Mons Eva Mielde or else he would have been playing up beside Flo yes I'm sure that's upset them but uh, still you thought they'd have been more aggressive than what they have been I mean they've got five in the middle of the field and yet uh, McManaman still keeps getting himself in between the five midfield players and the four back, back four players and picking up the balls exactly like that and really, you know, you, you can't be allowed at Manor on that sort of space in, in this type of, type of game. Bustling into that hill and doesn't quite get it, though. Redknapp. Once again, there's only flow in the Liverpool half. I just wonder if, even though they're one goal up, one or two of the players having to go forward will get a little bit frustrated with all of this. McAteer. The onus on keeping possession. And no team does it better than Liverpool. Ruddock. That was a longer ball again, McManaman. Harkness. Just pop back in again. This is the Icelandic player I was talking about. Glitzen. Brought into the team just to play in midfield and leave Flo all on his own. Now McAteer. Ruddock. Liverpool players not running off the ball all that uh, imaginatively at the moment, I think. They're certainly very closely marked, and there's a the kind of mistake that Ray was anticipating might be made. And I think the referee has given the free kick for that, and there's going to be a yellow card for Ruddock. Just took it far too easily, Ray. Yeah, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a poor pass from John Barnes back to Ruddock. It always put him in trouble, and when he tried to clear it, Flo got into him very quickly and there we saw the foul which finished up with him getting the yellow card which really is an unnecessary in a game like this which could cost him later in the competition so free kick 
So we're lining up here, number three, of course, after Vag. That's the captain. Liverpool line up. Uh, Hassan, of course, could take this as well. Free kick expert, here he is going back. Scored against PSV in this time. Totally miscuing it with five minutes remaining of this first half. And Liverpool still leading by one goal to nil. Running again this time, looking a bit cumbersome. Can't get the shot in. Flo comes down there as Hassan again brought that ball down. And the Liverpool defence back very quickly. And although he hasn't had a ball all that often, this big man, there he is again, Flo. Trying to get around his man. Almost doing it and appealing for the penalty kick, but that was purely theatrical. Well, again, it was Harkness that actually saved the day with that tackle. And Flo shrugged him off the ball there. And this is a good tackle by Matteo there. He definitely plays the ball for me. There's no doubt that it's not a penalty kick, but they certainly do get a corner out of it. Well, the sheer inactivity seems to be encroaching on Liverpool at the moment. They've been doing nothing at the back. They haven't been put under pressure, but as I said, Flo's very presence, his huge, towering physique, making him a danger. James just getting his hand to it. Up he goes again. And he's not in goal, and Ruddock right in line and for the first time and only very briefly liverpool have been under pressure yes yeah, certainly it was a dangerous corner brown had three players in the six yard box james got the first punch the second punch wasn't good you saw him out of goal there here we see he gets a good fist to the first one and then matteo gets a good block on the ball james decides to come for it and all of a sudden there was all sorts of chaos and i think uh, free kick there it eases the pressure and uh, it needed to be at that stage as Skyland came up. Eric Skyland lifted his boot too high and uh, Liverpool surviving that. Well, I I'm sure the manager wouldn't agree, but I think they needed something like that to bring them to the centre of the game. I, mean, I think they've lapsed into a kind of a complacent mood. Now, nah, should be put back by the head, but... Matteo wants to come out of that himself. On to James. Now Barnes, at long last, he's a bit of open space there, and good backtracking all the same by Peterson. Just put him off. Barnes had a bit of uh, spare acreage there for the first time in the match almost. Yes, unfortunately, when the ball landed at his feet, for once, his touch let him down. His first touch took the ball just too far away from him and allowed the, the tackle to come in and stop his pass from being as efficient as I'm sure it would have been. Where they go again. Hassan, and I think offside. Trying to ply this man with the ball. As I said, we are hearing that Liverpool are very interested in him. Certainly are at the moment. Well, not much in it. Although we've said before, Ray, the, the running of the line by the assistant referees, as they're nobly called now, is causing a lot of controversy in games. Yes, I think um, certainly in the number of games that, that we see the, this season that there have been errors by the assistant referees, as, as you rightly say they're called. And uh, certainly with this offside decision, it's something we all look to improve in different areas. And I think that's an area where these assistant referees could possibly improve. Nicely put in, and this time the goalkeeper, Vida Bahus, gets it. Brian Bergen finished fourth in the Norwegian League this season, but they had Christiansen in goal uh, throughout that, the Icelandic goalkeeper. And that certainly meant a lot to them. Harkness with it. Bobby Fowler. 
What a night it must be for a striker if he realizes he might be left on his own a lot and he scores a brilliant goal. I mean, it, it does make the night for you, doesn't it? Well, it does, but also, you know, when you you know you've got the likes of McManaman and, and uh, Berg. That's and a bit of looking ball. There's Flo. Chased eventually by Hilland. And very cool play indeed by McAteer and Matthew. Two young players, McManaman, seem to take his eye off it. Did have an opportunity, and now they're beginning to wake up this team. Peterson, that might be a free kick. Right on the edge of the box. Ruddock is saying he took a dive. Well, I think, it, I think to be fair to Harkness, is a bit unfortunate there. That uh, Certainly, for me, there was no contact there. There's the touch. It's just a, it's just a clash. It's not a, it's not a tackle, and he's fell over. And uh, now this is an important situation now, just on the mouth of our time that Liverpool do not concede from this free kick. I think very likely that Hassan will take this. He scored with a free kick against PSV. So up he comes again. And now we can hear the Norwegians in the background. One thought they had taken to the hills, but they are there. And it's driven right against the white wall, out again, and the run forward. Referee had his arm up, and I think that is a half-time whistle, in fact, and Liverpool walk contentedly towards the pavilion, leading by one goal to nil. And I'm quite sure people watching this in Liverpool will be arguing about whether the goal we saw tonight by Robbie Fowler was the best he has ever scored. We'll be back, of course, very shortly. You'll be watching the whole second half live. But uh, let's just watch this just before we go. This was a chance, the, the sole chance in the first 25 minutes that the Norwegian side had. And he really should have done rather better than that. Now watch this again. Beautiful ball played inside. Fowler up in the air and then driving it in well there we are i think one of the best i've seen him score excuse me think your regular razor shaves as well as his gillette sensor excel yeah we'll try back live to euro cups with konica You're looking at the Brandbergen Stadium, and of course, the second half between Liverpool and Brandbergen about to come up. Liverpool leading by one goal to nil. Great strike by Robbie Fowler. And we'll be back uh, after the commercial break. Remember, you're watching Eurosport, and we'll have Brandbergen against Liverpool's second half very shortly. <laughs> Welcome back to the Brandbergen Stadium, about to start the second half, and we can tell you as we go into the second half that uh, Brand have made a very significant substitution. The man I was saying, who's been ill over the past two or three days, didn't start the game, was on the bench, is now on Mons Ivar Mielder. He's a striker. He scored 19 goals along with uh, Flo this season, played for Austria Wien and uh, really regarded as a powerful force. They were obviously concerned about his full 100% fitness, but that might change their whole strategy, Ray. Well, certainly, I think they'll get the ball forward quicker now. They'll play with two up the front. They've now got quite a strong breeze behind them to help them on, and it really will now be a test, I think, more of a test for the Liverpool back three. Ball swept away forward. Push forward there by Moon. Well, I, I think, um, you know, they must have looked at how uncomfortable Ruddock has been on the one-to-ones against Flo and said, well, maybe we can pressurise them just a little bit more. Well, Neil, to be fair to him, he hasn't played for some while and he has at times when he's been left one against one with Flo. It has looked a little bit sluggish and a little bit heavy around, uh, around his feet when the ball's been there as well. But, uh, you know, he's now going to get tested. That's a certainty. Skyland put that forward. Peterson. 
Nicely touched back by Fowler. Every Liverpool player back in defence at the moment. Not that I think they're particularly anxious. Just forming up very well now. A little bit of a spot going on here to James. Almost beaten by that. That's the man who just come on as a substitute. Certainly looks 100% fit with a shot like that. Whether it'll last or not, Ray, I don't know. Well, it's a good way to start with your first touch, isn't it? Tremendous his left foot there. James stretching all. The, may well have had it covered if it had been on target, but that certainly has, uh, has, li has livened up the crowd who went very, very quiet in that first half. Well, I think uh, the coach, Kiel Chenford, has given them a real roasting at halftime, and that's it! The equaliser in exactly two and a half minutes. And you know, I think uh, there was no way, but look at the way he turns the ball here. Beautiful goal by Hassund. The man who scored against PSV. Well, you see, he turns Neil Ruddock again. Neil a bit awkward there, and that's a great finish. He's bent it in there. Watch him turn, turn Neil Ruddock. Neil can't get back at him there. Matteo can't close him down. And, and certainly James had no chance with that whatsoever. A great goal. Well, you know, this is the man who's considered only a fringe player with the club. Just in and out of the team. He hasn't been a regular playing in uh, league football. And now suddenly he scores a superb equaliser. And one wonders. I, I mentioned this Jekyll and Hyde possibility about this side. And now they've gone at Liverpool for the first time in a game that's... Quick run forward there and the retaliation, and now that's a confirmation of that score. And I think we're in for a different game now. That's the announcer reminding us all in case we didn't know the score was, and up goes Rudder. Surely they must have read the unease that he was exhibiting in that first half, and now the pressure is on. Well, so they just you know they look a different outfit because they've got these John two Peterson the down there and out comes James well just for a moment uh, it did look as if Harkness was going to let that slip however James gets there well Liverpool have now got to do a job of work at quieting the crowd down again they were silent in the first half but hear them now they're really getting behind their side and plus this very strong win they've got behind them is going to help them. Well, I think they certainly must play the ball now to Robbie Fowler. He looked in the mood to start off with. There's John Barnes. Berger puts it in. Redknapp. McAteer. McManaman. McManaman goes down the side. This really has aroused Liverpool. And McAteer with the shot. There he is again. Living it to Redknapp. Barnes. Sharper play by Liverpool. I think the, the war of attrition that the side have been playing did affect uh, Liverpool's the sharpness where now they've got it back stung by that goal and we really have had two superb goals in this game Bjornaby with it the goalkeeper certainly wasn't fine wanting this time despite his rather mediocre reputation can't get hold of that Well, remember in Sion, the, the Swiss did have a very good start uh, against Liverpool. But the professional way Liverpool went about it after early adversity is something I think that they have to repeat here now. They've come back rather well, playing confidently again. Here's McAteer. Wasn't such an easy ball he put forward there, Ray. No, I think uh, sort of Berger wanted it earlier than what McAteer is prepared to give it to him, and it allowed the defender the time to, to hassle that ball out of play. Oh, he's made a mistake, and he brings Fowler down. Well, the referee 
who's about to, what, 30 yards away, has given the foul against uh, Fowler. Well, in my eyes, Fowler has done nothing wrong there. That's a penalty. It's as simple as that. The, the keeper just drops the ball. He just drops the ball and then pulls Robbie Fowler down. Well, the referee, as I said, was nowhere near that. Neither was the, the linesman on the side, so I think Brandberg in a very fortunate indeed. Nice little ball played forward. Well, you know, I think that's a, a pretty conventional thing, is it not? The defender always gets the benefit of a doubt in a situation like that, and that time it was the goalkeeper. Now, here goes Fowler. Slightly loose with that. Long one by Paldan. Should be picked up by Redknapp. Way by Matteo. Ruddock. That might just be got in McAteer. I think uh, put off by the presence of Peterson coming in towards him. That's a goal scorer. Ruddock after that, I think a little bit of a push though. Yes, it has been given, it's a free kick. Actually, the goalkeeper wasn't uh, pressurized all that much in the first half for uh, Bahus. No, he wasn't, no. Liverpool had a lot of possession without actually getting into the box and troubling him. However, Peterson about to take this free kick. Just over eight minutes gone. No problems there. Peterson, modern Peterson playing in his second season for the club. Came up uh, through the ranks of second and third division football. Well, McAteer playing down the right-hand side. I think his enthusiasm comes from the days when he was a regular on the cop at Liverpool. Oh, he does a superb job for Liverpool down that right-hand side. I mean, he, he's got a fantastic engine there. He's up and down that right-hand side. And when he gets in the last third of the field, he tends to get very good balls into the box for the strikers. Well, that best passing won't do at all as Glatterson, the, the, the Icelandic player, swept that away forward. There's a run by Fowler. He'll do a lot to get that one as Pierovi Ludvigsen comes across. Picked up by Barnes. Berger, Barnes, that's good play. Can Barnes slip it aside? Now Fowler going in, tries to beat the goalkeeper. Wonderful play. Barnes right to the heart of it. And I wonder, did he strike it too soon? No, I think he saw he was going to get closed down outside of the left foot. I mean, he's so unlucky there. But this is great play by John Barnes. Look at that little touch outside of the foot. You see Fowler look up outside of the left foot and just clipping the bar. The keeper was nowhere near it. Now oh, they come forward again, the ball breaking kindly for Liverpool that time, and they really should have been out. I just wonder, another stride further, and he might have been in a, a slightly more relaxed position. McAteer. Leaving that to Matteo. That's very cool play by Liverpool again. Well, they've taken it on the chin, and they've come back. Well, it's always a sign of a good side when you come back from a, from yeah. a blow like that. Mile McManaman, that's a good position for him. That's too finely judged that. Now, here he is again. Very good ball played to the outside to Bjornaby, who's coming in on this side. It's uh, headed away there by Eftervag. Man's not quite uh, able to pick that one up. Now McAteer. Berger. Patrick Berber, one of the exciting stars of that Czech Republic side. 
hasn't scored a, a Premier Division goal since last September, all the same. He seems to have dried up. Had an exciting start. McAteer, that's what Ray was talking about him. Really, it's, it's, it's uh, the concentration and determination that is so much part of his play. Well, the free kick. Almost 12 minutes got it. In terms of uh, entertainment, it's a much better half. Well, it, the game has had exactly what it needed. It needed the uh, brand side to get back in it and, of course, to get the equalising goal. And it's now given them confidence, but also it's shown that Liverpool are a good side because they've come back and they've created a couple of openings themselves. And I still say that they should have had a penalty. I'm positive the keeper fouled Robbie Fowler there. Put in there by Eftervag. And I think a corner kick is Ruggard, uh, Ruddock went for that. I'm saying Rugged Ruddock. Try that ten times, Ray. I'll leave that one with you. <laughs> Across goes Morton Peterson. Now, they caused a problem with the corner kick in the first half. They've got those same players in and look, here. Look at the wind. Yes. It really has got up now. That's what uh, is blowing straight into the Liverpool goal mouth. Up goes the mountainous figure of Flo trying to get his head to that. Well cleared all the same now. Liverpool on the break. And just hemming them in. And I think the one good aspect of this is that at least Brandbergen have come out at them, leaving a little bit of space at the back for the breakaway. Barnes played that well. Used to score a lot of goals, but because of his new position, he doesn't score all that many, Ray. No, three, three in about 25 games. No, he sits more in the middle of the field there. Very rarely does he play long passes. He keeps possession of the ball, plays his little 10 and 15-yard passes, keeps the cream-shirted uh, Liverpool team in possession of the ball. Now McAteer. Looks back for support. Red nap. Take it away, that uh, off Barnes almost getting to it. Mahasan, goal scorer. Mielder, stringing the passes together now, all right. That was Gleiterson. We had on the far side, Moon. Nicely judged the wall. Thought that was just making its way towards Flo and the referee weighs play on Berger Matteo crowd trying to raise their side now they were more like zombies in the first 45 minutes McAteer, disappointing finish by McAteer that time. Redknapp. Always looks as if he has all the time in the world trying to think his way through a game. Barnes. Well, McAteer is seeing a lot of this ball on this uh, right-hand side. Bjornemi hasn't had as much on the other, and that's the free kick. Hefty tackle there by Klaus Eftervag. Thought to be really a born natural leader. Strong personality. Well, Berger gets free there. And maybe he should have played the early ball, gets another chance, and he's offside. Just a bit, a little bit uh, in, in, in two minds there, Ray. Yes, he had half a yard there to get the ball in, and certainly Fowler and McManaman made their runs, anticipating Berger to get that ball in first time. But as soon as he turned back on himself, it caused Fowler and McManaman problems to get themselves free again. Red nap. Ruddock and a little bit of a slip there by McManaman. Like to see him get going in this game tonight again. 
Yelda. Gleiterson. Way to that far side and in it goes to Flo. Ball just played a little bit too far from as Peterson came up to chip that across. And the Norwegian crowd liked that. Here was a ball. Peterson coming into that. Here, sweeping it across towards Flo. Yes, I mean, what? There's Ronnie Moran there, one of the Liverpool coaches, obviously not happy with one or two things at the moment and explaining things to the assistant there, Dougie Livermore. James easily to that. And the referee is penalising him for wasting time and he wants to take this quickly indirect free kick I think actually what he penalised him for there Archie was he had the ball in his hands he dropped it onto the floor and then picked it up again and of course the keeper is not allowed to do that so free kick indirect <laughs> dangerous situation here but Liverpool experienced enough to defend us. Flo is hovering at the back. And out the race, and away it goes. It really is uh, difficult to take some of these when there are so many players packed into the box. There's uh, Gear Hassund. Man has scored that quite excellent goal. <laughs> McManama. <laughs> McAteer, little bauble of the ball in front of him. Lost crucial uh, control of the ball there. Barnes. Beautiful ball and great running by McManaman. Too many defenders back there, though. Ludvigsen was there. Efterbag now again to Barnes. Good ball from the back for Barnes, and so many players in there. It was difficult to cut it back. Yes, I mean, the first opportunity was the best one. McManaman was through there. Fowler pulled off his marker, but unfortunately, McManaman's ball wasn't quite of the quality that Fowler needed. Cross goes McManaman. Was expecting the short one and just touched away. Skyland came across there, just got his head to it. Still one each. New ball coming on. Referee showing why is a referee? Well, <laughs> well sh certainly showing what th this defense did in the first uh, half, just kicked the ball down the park, but now an entirely different performance from them. Trying to get that ball back into Mielder there. The Islander has actually proved to be very useful in the second half. He didn't show up much. Well, none of them did in the first half. Now here's the break. Now McManaman in a position he loves, going out of defense. Beautiful control. Has to cut back though. McAteer. Fowler, no chance of getting that one though. That was actually a wasted ball, Ray. I think they had to have some more variety about it than that. It was really because we've talked about how good McAteer is de at delivering balls from wide areas. He's had three opportunities. He's had three opportunities to actually get balls in and has failed with all of them. And Harkness quite rightly going in the book there. It was a two-footed tackle. He, he can't have any excuses about that. You can't get away with that with the new laws. In it. With, with the old laws, you couldn't get away with it. Never mind with, with the new ones. In with two feet and in the book for it. So, free kick. The 
has been taken by a man who I think has been as steady as a rock. Haven't seen him coming forward all that much. Close Eftevag. Plays it wide. I think it's just gone over, though. And I make it now almost halfway through the second half. It's still one each. And the quality of the goal scoring is, uh, of the two goals that have been scored is at least uh, something that this game will be remembered by. Well, there's still a long time, no, a long time to go in this game, and certainly I think there's, there's more things that's likely to happen in it because, uh, say, the wind is playing a part. It is difficult to defend against, and he's going to cause pro defenders problems. Led by Flo, come back just a little bit deeper. Look at the strength of the man coming through, and he wins himself another free kick, which will be strongly wind-assisted and something that might cause just a little bit of uh, apprehension in that defense again. Really batters his way through, doesn't he? Well, he certainly does. He, is, he has got some strength. It'll be interesting. Well, it looks as though they've taken Hassan off the free kicks now. He's had three goes and damaged the crowd with each one, so... It's now Piero V. Ludwigsen that looks as if he might take this. Well, the three hovering about it as well. Ettevag is there again. Well taken. Redknapp clears. Flo. Well, I think he'd be a, a useful asset for anybody in the Premier Division race. Well, I say he looks awkward and ungainly at times, but he's got this strength where he looks like he's going to lose the ball, and all of a sudden he comes out with it, and in an advantageous position as well. Uh, let me remind you that Liverpool are said to be, if not on the point of signing him, extremely interested in bringing him to Anfield. Oh, almost a gift to him. Goes after it again. He certainly eats up the distance with that long stride of his. However... Uh, Ends on a goal kick. Well, this is the 21st European game that Brand have played. The best result against PSV Eindhoven, of course. Very famous one as far as they're concerned. Ruddock. Well, that was a, a, a wasted ball there by Skyland because Ruddock had simply put it to his boot. Barnes. I think Barnes has relished this new role over the past uh, couple of seasons now. Fowler. Bjornaby. Redknapp. Very quick tackle, and I, I thought an illegal one there by Eftervag on on McManaman. Well, that's it. Slander putting him forward again. That's an, a neat ball. No flow. In he goes. This time, Berger coming back, helping out his defense. And away goes Redknapp. Now, McAteer, let's see what his finish is this time. The last one was disappointing. So that put it too far ahead. Now, Matteo. Bjornaby. I think he felt that Berger was off on a run down the left-hand side. Picked up there by August uh, Kletason. Nicely taken by Roger Hilland. There he is again, forcing his way through. The man who was given an offer by St. Pauli of Hamburg to sign for them at the beginning of the season, turned it down. He wanted to stay in his native brand, uh, Bergen, and he's also doing a university degree, so he's a talented player because of other reasons to stay to play his football here number five helen mcmanaman that's a nice ball inside berger likes his distance and uh, 
Trying to curl it away round. Now, I've seen him score spectacular goals from about there. In fact, he's that kind of goal scorer. Well, when McManaman picks him out, it's a good ball, but you actually fancy him to at least hit the target. But as Eftabov uh, comes out at him and closes him down quickly, can't quite get his foot round it and curl it into that top corner. And, of course, the man that uh, so impressed everybody with his play for the Czech Republic. I suppose the only game he didn't enjoy was the, the final itself. Even though he scored the penalty against Germany. Of course, he, he's a greatly experienced player, you know, with uh, Sparta Prague and Borussia Dortmund. Two championship winning sides. There he is again. And he'll get no goal kick. You know, this man, Roger Hellander, was talking about, he's a very good, solid player in, in midfield, the kind of player I think would do well in different kind of leagues. And I think a club like uh, Brian Bergen simply have to rely on, on that kind of thing benefiting them. He just likes to live here and study here. Well, it's, it's a very nice place to live if you like the rain. <laughs> <laughs> McManaman. There's McAteer. Seems to judge it better that time. Look at the curl that Fowler. Well, he had Bionovic just behind him here. And uh, it might have gone further. Well, this is what he's capable of. Long last, he gets a quality ball in. And Robbie Fowler just gets underneath it. Head to bag. And James will let that go all the way through. I would imagine a player like uh, Patrick Berger coming into English football in any case, it, you can't simply make an instant adjustment to a different kind of environment. Well, I think when he originally came into the side, I mean, he was scoring goals for fun. Sure, he looked and, good. And then uh, he had a little bit, he leveled off a little bit, and then he's, again, uh, because Colin Moore had been doing quite well, He's, uh, he's finding it difficult to get back in the team. Here's McManaman, Bjornaby's free on the left. Bjornaby going to the line, maybe have done just a little bit too much. No, ball has to be swept for the corner. And the referee, then it is Ray. Yes, and Liverpool this time had three or four bodies to hit in the box. Unfortunately, it was just curled too far away there from... Well, I've got it post. just as you were talking and watching the slow motion replay. Liverpool took a very quick corner and then got another one back. Jimmy Redknapp with it. Goalkeeper's there, but I don't think they were too confident in him coming for it. Headed away by the man I was talking about, Helen. By my watch, we've 15 minutes left to play. McManaman. Here he goes. Fowler tried to give him assistance. Strong buzz forward there by Paldin. Loses out now. Bjornaby. Sides to. Reduce the game to a walking pace. Well, you wonder how much will fitness come into this last 15 minutes. Let's remember this is Brand's first competitive game for some while, although they've been away playing friendlies trying to get match fitness. But, uh, you know, Liverpool are, are battle-hardened, and you would think that their fitness should show in this last 15. Here's Big Bannerman. Can he get away? He's appealing to the linesman that he was fouled there. It really was a late tackle, but uh, Lysman just turns away from him. You know, he's my kind of player, McManaman, and I like to see a player like that who'll take on defenders, uh, particularly in these long runs he had. I was thinking about the Euro 96. Uh, I thought he was quite superb in that. Well, he's different, isn't he, in terms of there are not many people in the Premiership who love to run with it and have such tight control as he has. Well, 
is suddenly on a long-term contract with Liverpool. All right, here he goes again. Ball bobbling about for him, but up comes McAteer. Just tucked away from him again. Oh, I think they've realized the, the kind of play of McAteer, and they've watched that throughout the game. And Some of his ball into the penalty box, not of his normal quality. Bjornaby. Barnes. Now McAteer. Thought a hand might have been used. He might get the corner kick from this. No, throw in. I think they have to be reminded, of course, that when he went to Sion and did so well there and came back to Anfield thinking it was straightforward. Look what happened in the game there when he went behind, had to come back again. Quite remarkable. So it's uh, a warning to them about this. Here's a challenge. Seemed to have strained himself. I, I think actually it wasn't that uh, side the ball out for a throw, and it was when the ball struck him in the lower part of the stomach just seconds before. Yes, I've used that euphemism before <laughs> myself, Ray. <laughs> yeah, I just get the impression that Liverpool, after that, I wouldn't say shaky start to the second half, but. Uh, the much more incisive start by Brand Bergen. Uh, I think they may be settling for the one old draw. Well, at the moment, you would say that uh, all the initiative that uh, Brand set out in that first 10, 15 minutes seems to have gone now. Liverpool seem to be back in control and are starting to open them up. And Jamie Redknapp has been outstanding tonight. Now there's a lovely ball played out to Bjornaby. And he rather wasted again. I think I think the ball from White has, has been a bit disappointing tonight. Yes, I would think that uh, you know Roy would say that he would have expected better balls in from McAteer and beyond when they've been in, in good Ooh. positions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said this man's been uh, outstanding tonight, Jimmy Redknapp, <laughs> showing he, he can also be physical when he needs to be. Free kick. Peterson lining up to take this. Flo tries to get up and out, and this time Ruddock right behind it. Nothing fancy about it at this stage. Just get it out of the danger zone. Way to Fowler. Fowler gets a bit of freedom, taking the weight off his defense. Redknapp gets it back. Yes, in an area which has been so congested and uh, the Liverpool players so harassed, Redknapp has been the very epitome of coolness. Well, he has. He's made room for himself. He's very, very rarely given the ball away. He's always made himself available throughout the game. He's varied his passing with short and long passes. And uh, certainly he could... I would, sure that he could be satisfied with his performance this evening. Well, Bjornaby, referee wagging a finger at him, did he? There's the, the challenge there. Well, I think it's just a case of his... Oh, he got the yellow card. He's, I mean, it's a little bit harsh. He's just grabbed the player's shirt there. Sadly disappointed about it. Well, Ruddock, I don't think Ruddock got hold of that the way he intended. That's a beautiful piece of play by McManaman. Now McAteer. Little bit of space. The screaming for the ball on the far side. That's a better one. Berger! Great breakaway there by Liverpool. And perhaps one of the best moves in the match. Well, again, it was Liverpool got players up in support. Berger will be disappointed here as he goes to control it. It comes onto his right foot. I'm sure when he tried to control that, he wanted to try and control it onto his left side. And then I'm sure we'd have seen a deadlier finish. But unfortunately, his control brought it onto his right and didn't get the accuracy with the finish. Away they go now. Flo. Ball played out to him by Mielder. Mielder goes inside.
Trying to get as many players into the box as they can now. And there's James, and no challenge in James. Flo seemed to give up on that as the ball went to the near post. There's nine minutes left, according to my watch. And certainly one each away from home nowadays in football and in, in any corner of Europe is a good result. Well, yes, certainly Liverpool have scored that vital away goal. They haven't been beaten, and of course they've got Anfield to go back to. So in terms of the result, if it stays like this, then they'll be happy with it. Now they're exhorting on their troops. They responded uh, in the first 15 minutes, but after that, Ray, nothing much uh, came of them, just occasional flurries. I think appealing for offside now. Matteo does get it away. McAteer can't pick it up. There's a goal scorer. Certainly got a great left foot on him. Peterson swings that in. That comes out uh, very handily. Oh, that's a great opportunity missed. Flo making his way right through. Watch this. Turns round and lets rip. Well, certainly, you know, Flo here just gets off McAteer. McAteer goes towards the ball. There's Flo, creates the space and strikes it. And James manages to get his body in the way of it. You wonder if Flo had left it, whether Milder would have actually had a better opportunity because he was running right onto the ball. Here's Bjornaby. Oh, Fowler puts it there. That's offside. You could tell quite easily he'd been left isolated there. Well, Bionavi has come back. There's uh, the offside, and that's uh, almost at max Senate pace. We certainly could see it before then. Uh, Bionavi has come back to his native Heath. It's been led by some derisory remarks as he came on to the pitch. Nice touch of uh, fraternity. All flows been left on his own. Ruddock left that. The flag didn't go up. Well, Ruddock put his hands to his head there, and so he should, because how on earth he let that go, I do not know. He couldn't possibly have known that Flo was behind him, and, and Flo really should have uh, certainly put Bran in front there. Well, he, we have seen the kind of asset of uh, his strength and the powerful running, but he might just like that immaculate touch that is needed and has been exhibited already tonight by Robbie Fowler. That's two chances he might have scored at. Well, it's two, ch it's two golden chances which you don't normally get at this level, and really, he should have at least put one of them away. Ball stays in play, McAteer. Of course, when he scored his 19 goals this season, or last season, it was in a different kind of football altogether. Back into the hands of uh, Vida Bajos. Can't really make too much of a judgment in this goalkeeper because, again, he's had a quite his second half. Yes, I think I've seen one or two flaws, which I think Liverpool will have seen as well, and uh, I'm sure they'll try and work on that before the return leg. Played forward there by Clesterson. Now, neatly broken up. There's freedom and space now for the man who can exploit it very well. McManaman dragging the defenders with them out to McAteer again. High one by Redknapp, but he's testing them now. Just a little bit too obvious now. I don't think McManaman was uh, especially happy about that. One of the ball played back. And I don't doubt for a moment, Dre, that there will be adjustments made in the Liverpool defence as well before the second leg. Well, obviously, uh, Mark Wright, I'm sure, will be fit by then and he would come back into contention. Um, I'm sure that 
you know, Steve Hartness can be pleased with the way that he's come back into the side after a, after a long absence. Matteo certainly has, has done his job at the back there. Um, and Neil Ruddock has, has had a game which, you know, looks like it's the sort of game when he hasn't played in the first team for some while. Here's Mick Bannerman. Liverpool were handed a gift by the goalkeeper there. Not a slag pass by McManaman and Robbie Fowler does well. Quick as a flash in there. Barnes. Well, I don't think uh, Norwegian football has been renowned for the flamboyance of the, the individuals that's produced good sound technical players. We've seen that again tonight. That should be cut off by Ruddock. Bjornaby. Ruddock. Just neat play by Liverpool. And in comes the captain, Eftervog. Just about ooh, over two minutes remaining. Still one each. Testing out that Liverpool defence again. Hossen, the Gill scored it with his left foot. There was a deflection. Nice control there by McAteer. Barnes. Bjornaby. And all they need now is competence. I think it might be difficult to snatch a goal at this stage. And having said that, here's a build-up for a goal, maybe. McManaman coming. Here's McAteer. That's a useful ball. Berger! Well, it's one of the commentating traits to say nothing's going to happen and something certainly does happen. Almost uh, an own goal there, the captain, Eftevag. But that will do for Liverpool. I think with a strengthened side in the second leg, given all that I've said about the warnings that they have to uh, take heed of from what happened when Sion went there again. I think they've shown tonight they're quite capable of getting to the semi-final. McAteer. Red now. A little bit too much in it. But the more you see of him, the more you realize this. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, in this player. Great potential. A lot of good years to come in Redknapp. Not so many good years for this man, because I think when Christiansen returns, the Icelandic uh, player, he'll be back again. Tell me he's a great Leeds United fan. Flows come back deep. Out of frustration, I think, more than anything else. They're not fighting well for that. McManaman, McAteer. Good play. Redknapp. Now, who's in the box? He has played low this time. An attempted dummy. And the final whistle goes. There it is. The final score. Two excellent goals. A quite superb one by Robbie Fowler. The equaliser by Gear Hassan. It ends up... Uh, a one-all draw, and I think Roy Evans uh, just uh, passing out of sight. Swab jerseys, are, are you coming to join us next season? I don't know what they're talking about there, but certainly they seem to have enjoyed the encounter. And would he end up eventually with Liverpool? Liverpool, I think, will end up eventually in the semi-final of this tournament. I would think so, yes. I think that Liverpool have done a solid job. I think that apart from the first 15 minutes of the second half, when, when Brown actually did get at them, that Liverpool have been in control of it. And certainly, um, I would think that in the second leg, that this keeper, Bajos, will be put under an awful lot of pressure, and we might find out where his weaknesses actually are. Well, Neil Ruddock had one or two slips in the game, of course. Uh, he might yet be able to take off one or two pounds, uh, Ray, but um, then I should talk. You saw him walk away there, but at least the brand supporters have stayed behind the team.
There they are, they've gone across to, to greet a support that had been rendered almost dumb in the first 45 minutes as their team decided not to play football at all but simply to put up a barrier and a barrier that uh, Liverpool broke in the most spectacular way through Robbie Fowler. One of the, the best uh, European goals I've seen in a long time, Ray. Well, certainly, you know, we've seen some we've seen some great goals in the last couple of days and that goes along with the best of them. It was a tremendous flick and he knew that he had to volley. So he took it early and here we see it now. He, he took it early and as it landed, just took it on the volley and that was a great goal. It certainly was. Well, there we are. That's the voice of Ray Clements you were listening to. That's the goal, the equaliser by Hassan. Uh, Ray's been with us again here in Bergen and from uh, Arch McPherson and Ray Clements from a rather chilly night but a good performance by Liverpool. Goodbye. <laughs>